All right, good morning and welcome everybody to the Health Transformation Webinar. This is your host, Kate Archibald, and really excited to uh, be on here today. And so what we're gonna be talking about today is cleansing and detoxification. So um, yeah, this is, this is something that's uh, always a really intriguing uh, topic. And so we're gonna dive right in um, it's, it's summertime, people are trying to get fit, trying to get those nice ripped abs, and, um, and so it's always nice to get some good cleanse and detoxification. So um, Instagram world, I'm going to flip you around so you guys can actually see, um, see the screen here. Give me a second. All right, so we are going to be diving into uh, cleansing and detoxification. Sorry, uh, you guys aren't listening to Reagan Archibald today. You're actually listening to Cade. So this is Cade Archibald, and uh, we're talking cleansing and detoxification. So we'll dive, dive into a few different um, things that you got to look out for. So we'll just start by... Um, I, one thing before I jump into today's topic, I wanted to make a quick announcement about the Pain Revealed documentary that just launched last night. Really cool stuff. Uh, we have a few of our patients are on that documentary. So what I would ask you guys to do is get to go to painrevealed.com or, um, or uh, for those of you on the webinar platform, you can uh, click on the link that I have provided here. Um, there's a referral link there, um, and that will take you to painrevealed.com, and you guys can actually get registered for this really cool documentary. Um, it's free right now, so take advantage of it and uh, start, start seeing um, how, uh, how the healthcare industry is treating pain how there's so much, so many better ways and more effective ways to, to get help there. And so uh, check it out. All right, so let's, let's dive in back to the topic at hand, cleansing and detoxification. Um, for those of you in the um, Instagram world, typically we'd have this on our Salt Lake Instagram, but someone changed the password on me. So I'm just doing it on my personal page today. Um, so... <laughs> Hopefully the, the clinic's all right with that. So uh, here we go, cleansing and detoxification. First of all, let's define what a toxin is because I think a lot of times um, we hear this, this word toxic or toxin and uh, it can be, um, you know, it's, it's just a word that's uh, thrown around. And so toxin, it's any substance uh, that creates an irritating or harmful effect in the body. This can be in your water, can be in your food, air, especially in cosmetics and different products um, and exposure to chemicals, pesticides, solvents, uh, different heavy metals, molds, these can all deteriorate health. So figuring out ways to take these out can be really, really important. So some of the number, the, the biggest contributors, indoor air pollution. Um, so this can be dust mites, molds, uh, pet dander, uh, microbes, you have, um, you know, all, all these things in our house. Uh, we, we see mold. If you're living in an older house, may have mold contamination and you're starting to get um, some really odd symptoms, um, you, you definitely want to get your house checked for mold. Um, obviously, asbestos, lead, radon, those are all going to be uh, big poisons. Um, synthetic consumer products, so your solvents, different, different uh, cleaning products that you're using. And so, um, yeah, be, be aware of what you're, what you're spraying on um, all over your house and, and all these things because that can uh, contribute to uh, diminished health. Um, obviously, um, secondhand smoke, um, foam insulations, different woods, carpets, glues, um, paint preservatives, these can have formaldehyde in them, and then also pesticides. Um, so this can be pesticides that maybe you're using in, um, on your lawn, in your household uh, things, or it can be on the foods from foods that have already been sprayed. Um, water, 
And this is, this is a lot of times people don't realize uh, how important it is to have really good, clean, pure water. But there's uh, different types of water pollutants, um, which include you have soil runoffs. Um, so you know, there can be different, different minerals in your water that uh, can, can be you know, good minerals. There can also be some, uh, some heavy metals in there as well, different solvents, pesticides, and herbicides that leak in from um, crops that can get into our water system. Uh, different heavy metals, nitrates from sewage and fertilizers. That sounds really yummy to have in our water. Um, <laughs> there can be different hormones in chloroform or, or chlorine. Um, too high of uh, chlorine, um, too much uh, chloroform or chlorine, or in some cases, bromine. Um, it's uh, typically used as uh, in uh, swimming pools to, to help with those. Um, this uh, really taxes our thyroid. Um, so if you have, uh, you feel like you've had a lot of exposure there and you have thyroid problems, that could be a link. Um, just some, so uh, it, talking a little bit about Monsanto's and, and uh, the food farming industry, um, big agriculture, um, it's a tough, a tough job, but I get a good, good celery. Um, so. <laughs> Um, I, I really like this one. It's not salad dressing. They're spraying on your GMO food. If you're eating GMOs, uh, you're eating, ultimately you're eating Roundup, um, from Monsanto's. So in, uh, and this comes out of uh, GMO 101, but farmers can drown GMO corn, soy, um, sugar from sugar beets, canola oil or canola, alfalfa, cotton with Roundup. Um, and these crops, they don't die. Um, and bugs don't want to eat them. So my question would be is like, if, if bugs don't want to eat these, uh, would we want to eat these? Uh, because there's some, some pretty nasty stuff on those. And um, if you look at some of the long-term effects of what, um, and, and, and I think it's, the, the exciting part about this is it's becoming more and more common knowledge that this is not, um, an ideal source for food. It's not a good, um, a, a good source for food. And so, you know, it is, it is promising to see that there's some changes being made in the public and people are being more aware. I know Monsanto's uh, just paid out a, a boatload of money to uh, one of their um, previous employees um, because of some of the effects that those, uh, those chemicals had on them. And, you know, originally it was always said like, Hey, they're completely safe. Um, even, you know, I go back to my childhood. I grew up on a farm in, in Rexburg, Idaho. And, um, you know, we, we'd move pipe occasionally. Um, you get crop dusted. So, you know, planes are, are cruising over and, and you get a little, uh, nice little, um, cold, nice little itchy showers, uh, what I referred to it as. Um, but then later on in life, you start um, seeing some of these uh, different autoimmune conditions popping up. Um, I, mine was my skin. Um, noticed uh, different skin problems. I know with Reagan, he had uh, Hashimoto's, he had psoriasis pretty bad, so skin problems as well. Um, and so how much glyphosate is too much? So California's proposed limit is 1.1 milligrams. Um, the EPA legally allows 140 milligrams. That's 127 times more than uh, California's. And you know, I, I would propose maybe like zero uh, would be ideal. Um, that... That's uh, really where we'd like to, to get things, if we can get more organic crops. Um, studies have linked uh, glyphosate to cancer, kidney failure, um, different uh, chromosomal damage, so uh, DNA effects, immune system damage. Um, and when you combine these with chemicals found in Roundup, 100 times more toxic than glyphosate alone. Um, that's out of the truth about cancer. But I, I think if you look even deeper, we are exposed on a daily basis. Um, you take it, just you know, um, take uh, the GMO piece 
um, as it is. Um, and then you add in the chemicals that we're exposed to in our foods, in our, or in our, in our household, and even the clothes, the detergents we use. There's so many different things that, that uh, we're putting on our skin, which our skin is um, our, one of our biggest organs. And so we're just absorbing all of this uh, toxic stuff. And so it's really important to detox your body on a regular basis. Um, here, here's that, uh, that uh, Monsanto's payout which I think there's, uh, there's being more and more um, awareness around uh, glyphosate and the, the effects that this can have. Um, so detox or cleanse, what's, what's the difference? Um, so if you're looking at um, detoxification and cleansing, um, and, and why would we need to detox and, and why should we? So if um, it, it, we're, we're looking at um, detoxification and cleansing, not, not really a, a, a big difference here other than if you're detoxing, this is where you know, you, you're, you're getting out a lot of the, the toxicity in your body. A cleanse could be looked at as more of like you know, a liver cleanse or a specific organ and um, it's, it's more of a flush. Um, and that's not what we necessarily want you to go do is we don't want you to go through you know, a colon, a colon flush and just flush everything down the toilet and out, out the other side. Um, that's not enjoyable. It's also not effective because you, you, you lose a lot of uh, your, your microbiome uh, um, bacteria in your gut. And so you don't necessarily want to just flush everything out, but it's really, um, really important to, to get a good detoxification process. Um, and has so let's let's dive in a little deeper. So the term cleanse and detox are they're often used interchangeably. Um, while they both remove toxins from your body, a detox and a cleanse are two different things. Cleanse uses supplements or pills to eliminate substances directly, and um, cleanses normally focus on digestive tracts. Sorry, this should actually say a detox. So in a detox, we're going to be using um, different different supplements, different nutrition to help accelerate this uh, the detox process and the cleanse. Like I mentioned before, you typically is it's focused just on the digestive tract. Um, all right, so let's let's dive into to some more details here. Um, what is an in, incomplete bowel movement? So we want you to be having really complete nice um, and just uh, easy bowel movements. So a complete bowel movement, um, water is absorbed in uh, from the stool, make it, makes it somewhat firm, stool passes through comfortably. Um, it's, and so incomplete bowel movement looks like, uh, and this is when you're digestive, you have more uh, digestive symptoms uh, motility dysfunction, meaning it's not moving through you very fast. You get constipated, uh, may interfere with uh, complete bowel movement. Um, it's, it's really important to get your digestive system working. Um, so one, one thing that we've uh, used a lot in our clinic is the Detox 360. So um, this is um, an Apex line that we've used, and it has uh, so it it looks at 360 degrees of detox from you know looks at your body your lifestyle as well as the diet and food that you're you're putting into your body and so um, really taking a comprehensive approach is really important when it comes to uh, cleansing and detoxification and so um, you know, you're, you're going to have in this process, you'll have different dietary guidelines from specific recipes, foods, meal plans, programs. This is all something that you can, you can get from uh, the clinic to come in and ask. Um, this is something recommended to do on every, you know, every about six months, go through this process. Um, but before you go through a detox, we got to make sure your liver is in a good place. 
it, there's there's a few different things that we want to look at. And so we're going to definitely want to run some blood work before we just throw someone on a detox like this because um, it could be pretty brutal um, if, if your body's not in the right state to take this on. And so you have targeted nutrition with specific omega-3s, um, some different liver um, uh, liver support, different greens, and um, then some kidney um, and lymph system uh, uh, homeopathic uh, drainage formulas, as well as you got uh, some lifestyle training. So let's talk a little bit about some of the foods um, that we got to be aware of. And not necessarily you need to eliminate them, but, but looking at uh, some of these foods and just understand. So mercury and fish. Um, can act as a neurotoxin, um, especially in developing fetuses and, uh, and in adults. Um, these concentrations in the blood as a result of fish consumptions linked with infertility in men and women. And so when you're looking at, uh, when you're, when you're you know, considering eating fish, um, some things you gotta, gotta consider is um, what type of fish you're eating, where it's coming from. Um, deep sea big fish, they're typically going to be more mercury ridden. So um, this is a list so, um, of some of those fish. So you, you know, they, uh, so fatty fish concentrate uh, PCBs and dioxin which may impair memory, learning, and adults, although fatty fish are a good source of omega-3s. Um, and fatty acids, um, so to tofu, soy, canola oils, walnuts, flax seeds. So, and uh, tofu, soy, canola oils, um, I wouldn't say uh, to focus on those at all. And so these are some... So the fish that you want to focus on um, more than, you know, so this is, this is stuff you want to avoid here. Salmon, um, ideal source. So stay, try to stay away from farm raised. Typically if you're eating farm raised, um, uh, any fish, uh, you got to be aware of what they're feeding them. I've, I've heard horror stories and what um, fish get fed. Um, some are from, you know, there's, there's a food manufacturing company out of the Dead Sea where it's, it's illegal to have any uh, feed or any, and you can't fish out of the Dead Sea. The, the fish are just so toxic, but what they'll do is they'll take those toxic fish, they'll grind them down and they'll actually feed them to um, other fish farms. They'll make feed out of them. Uh, makes great, perfect sense. Uh, humans can't eat them, but the fish that we're going to eat can eat them. Um, I'm all those toxins rolled downhill. Um, so you want to find fresh, um, fresh water, uh, sockeye salmon, uh, probably the best, um, blue crab, haddock, pollock, flounder, trout. Uh, my favorite out of those definitely salmon. Um, great source of omega threes. Um, look at the pesticides found on your food sitting in the store ready for consumption. Um, these are going to affect the nervous system, especially when you're developing, they can cause cancer, interfere with endocrine activity. Um, some of the fruits and vegetables that you'll see high in pesticides, um, that you gotta be aware of apples. So, so these are all things you want to find organically. So apples, celery, imported grapes, peaches, potatoes, raspberries, um, strawberries. Strawberries have these really deep pores. Um, same with raspberries. And so if, they, if you're not getting those organic, um, and you need to scrub them like crazy, but even then, the, that, that strawberry absorbs those, uh, those toxins that are sprayed on it, and you're, you're going to be ingesting them. So just, uh, be aware of what you're putting into your body. Um, and then look at some of the, the products that you have at home. Um, from cleaning supplies, cosmetics. So when you're looking at your cleaning supplies, um, I found some pretty good stuff. Uh, I think it's seventh generation, some pretty natural, high quality products. Um, I know doTERRA has some great lines. Um, and then uh, Melaleuca as well. 
Um, those are probably, you know, I would say Melaleuca's got an amazing line of, um, of cleaning supplies that are very, very non-toxic and high quality. And so, um, you know, l- look at some of those options. Um, look at the cosmetic stuff you're putting on your face, ladies. And you're, um, be, be careful and be aware of what you're putting on there. Um, I know, uh, Sierra, my, my wife, she, um, she loves, it's uh, called crunchy. That's the, that's the makeup line that she uses and just loves it. Um, it's uh, very clean, organic, um, uh, makeup and, uh, yeah, and she looks great in it. Um, uh, plastics, be aware of uh, yeah, it, reducing as much plastics as possible, especially heating um, and uh, detergent soaps, even your carpet. Um, those things can um, can uh, cause some some you know if you're if brand new carpet sprayed with a bunch of chemicals. Um, other sources. So obviously pesticides, herbicides, detergents, and household products, plastics, um, all these different uh, things can, uh, they're, they're known as endocrine disruptors. And so what happens in these um, instances, so all these different chemicals that you're seeing in, um, man, they, we can just talk for days about this stuff, but all these different things um, that you're putting on your skin that we're in, that we're breathing in, that we're eating, um, understand what happens. And so what happens is you get these toxins um, in your body. If we eat, if we consume them or it's absorbed, but what typically happens in endocrine disruptor, it'll cause an excess in estrogen in, in specific areas in the body. And, depending on how your body holds um, weight, it can cause excess weight gain, can cause a a lot of different problems, asthma, allergies, anxiety, depression, um, cancers, endometriosis, um, just different immune problems, um, infertility problems, thyroid, prostate, all these different things. But from a a scientific, like a very simple scientific way of explaining is you think about your cell Your cell has a receptor site for estrogen. So estrogen hormone, which helps uh, your your glands and your organs communicate better. Um, If you, um, those endocrine disruptors or those uh, toxins, they can attach to that. They they have a very similar, um, similar molecule as that estrogen hormone. And so they can attach to that cell site where estrogen would normally, and then you'll start getting elevated levels of estrogen that aren't able to be absorbed and taken into the cell. So you have less communication between organ and gland function, and you'll start to your, what your body's natural response is, is as uh, those toxins get around, they, they start forming fat around it as a protecting uh, mechanism. And so those hormones will, will build up, you'll have a buildup in toxins, and then your body's ability to flush that out gets harder and harder and harder. It taxes the liver, the kidneys, the lymph system. And so you got to clean it out. You got, you just, you, you got to avoid some of these things, especially for like a four to six week process. Just do a full blown detox um, of, you know, getting rid of all those different chemicals, all those different, um, different pieces that you're getting exposed to. And then really, um, really focus on bringing in the best, highest quality foods, um, highest quality products um, that that you're exposing yourself to. Um, that is going to be the ideal um, process. So those are some different symptoms. If you're experiencing any of these different symptoms, you need to uh, do a cleanse and a detoxification. There, more or less uh, detox. Uh, detox. Um, so how we do this process, we're going to determine the toxic load. Uh, we look at your health history and some of those exposures. Um, we're going to figure out, or, or we will support your, you, you have to, when you're going through this process, support your detox organ systems. So functionally, you know, you, you got to get your digestion up. 
Um, and then follow your, uh, follow your individualized plan, which, you know, this plan is going to be, um, you know, there's, there's, um, specific ways, but we, we will uh, develop this based on some of the blood work that we look at based on liver function. If you've, uh, you know, we can look at heavy metal, um, exposure. We can do that through hair. There's some blood options. There's also urine options. Um, so there's some specific testing that we can do and then really focusing on all five of these uh, main detoxification systems. So we got to make sure it's essential before you go on a, a specific detox program, we got to do um, some evaluation to see how your detox systems are functioning and get them to a point where they, they can function and actually flush these things out. And so these are all really important pieces. I'm out of time today. Um, I hope you guys uh, learned at least a little bit on this. Um, now, hopefully you learned a lot. Um, great time. Um, what I'd ask you guys to do, go to the Pain Revealed documentary. Um, it just launched last night. It's free right now. Um, the, you will have to pay for that content in the future. And so go to painrevealed.com. Um, this is a collaborative of um, so many different doctors across the United States um, that are just changing people's lives with um, better options and, and more effective options than your pain medications and um, your different drugs and just band-aids and symptom, symptom maskers. So I would challenge you guys, go to that um, and, and engage. Um, watch that documentary. I think you'll learn a lot. We have uh, quite a few of our patients are actually interviewed on there. Uh, Reagan, I think in episode two, so that hasn't been released yet, but Reagan, founder of East West, he's going to be on that. And so uh, go in, take a look, check it out. Thank you guys so much. Have an amazing day. Love you all.